First of all, let me just wish all of you a happy new year and all the other holidays that happen around this time. And I hope you had a great time during the holidays. I know I did. So let's start this new year with some new web technologies. Well, at least new for me, because as you can see from the title of this video, we are going to be talking about React, which is not exactly new and has been around for a while now, but we haven't been using it on this channel. Now, if you have been following this channel for a while, you know I'm very big on Vue and lately on Svelte. And I still love those technologies and I will probably make more videos about them. However, what technologies I like or don't like doesn't always equal technologies I use on my day-to-day -day job. Actually, quite the opposite. Most of the technologies that I cover on this channel, I don't use day-to-day. -day, and mostly I'm learning them just one step before you guys. This can actually be a good thing, because I can approach those tutorials from the perspective of a beginner, but it can also be a bad thing, because I can't show you best practices or answer some of your questions, because I just don't know the answer, mostly for the lack of experience. So I decided to start this year with a technology that I actually use day to day, but only for the last few months, so I still consider myself a beginner but because I work with it extensively and I have colleagues in company that know much more about it than me, I could probably better answer your questions and show you the bestest of practices because in Human, the company I work for, for we are now using React for almost all new projects and we have extensive real world experience with it. And I must tell you, I really didn't like React at first, but the more I work with it, the more I like it, and I can see why it is currently the most popular front-end framework in the world. So I would suggest you try React through this mini-series, if not for the technology itself, then at least for the job opportunities that knowing React will open for you. Because, as I've said, it is the most popular framework, and it has the most job openings. So anyway, that all being said, let me just talk a bit about this series and the one that is going to come after it. In this series, I'm going to try to cover all of the basic React concepts uh, that are applicable in the year 2020. And I will probably be adding new videos to it as new React features come out throughout the year. But the main reason for creating this series is for it to be an intro to the series that comes after it and that would be using React with Next Framework and some sort of API to create server-side rendered websites. Kind of thing I do on a day-to-day basis. Now for this first episode, I'm going to give you just a quick taste of React and I'm going to show you a method of working with it that we will not be using throughout this series. But nevertheless, I think you should be aware that this option exists if you find yourself in the situation where you may need something like this. Okay, so this was a long intro, and now let's get to work. Okay, so React is a JavaScript library for building user interfaces. Kind of like Vue, kind of like Svelte. Uh, if you're looking at this channel, you probably know what this is, because we used Vue, we used Svelte on this channel. React is something very similar to that. And it's actually older than both Vue and Svelte, and much more popular. So it says it here it's declarative, it's component based, as you will see everything in React is a component and learn once, write anywhere alludes to React Native in which you would write React code and that will compile down to uh, iOS code, Android code and so on, right? So this is React. We are not going to go into detail what this is. I'm not going to explain how React works, how it's different from Vue and so on, but we will do some examples, of course. That's what we do on this channel. So in this episode, we are going to actually just create a normal HTML page and try to do some React on that page. We are going to be reacting on HTML. So here I have an, just a normal website with images, CSS, and one in the index.html file. So our mission here is to add React to that site. First of all, I'm just going to delete this, change the title, and I'm going to put this margin top to be 40 pixels. That's about it. Uh, I am using, so this site looks like this, right? It 
looks pretty nice. I'm using skeleton for this. This is a HTML boilerplate. You can get it at getskeleton.com or you don't have to, you can use whatever you want. It's just simple index.html file, some CSS and an image. As you can see, I'm running this site on localhost 8000. Uh, you can do that via WAMP, MAMP, XAMPP, Laravel, Valet, Vagrant, Docker, whatever you like, but you have to run your site through a server for React to work. I'm just using simple PHP server, so I just started it with PHP S localhost 8000, and then you go to localhost 8000 and you serve that site. So uh, you run it from your skeleton directory, or in my case, it's called existing site. There are of course a few ways to add React to your site, but in this episode we are going to show you the way that we are not going to be doing it throughout this series, uh, and I'm going to show you a way how you can add React to our already existing site. So to do that, you would first of all call React from CDN, and you do it uh, this way. Next thing you need to do, you need to uh, create a div in which all of your React stuff are going to display. So that div I'm calling React stuff and I'm just going to put it right here. And as you can see, we have a note right here that says when deploying, replace development JS with production min JS, because then you would have a smaller payload and your site would be more performant. Next thing, we need to create a component. As I said, everything in React is a component. So we need to create a component that we are going to call my component. Also, I'm going to put it in the directory called components. So we call it component, my component.js. Okay, so now we have that file right here. And of course, we need to call it below this script text. So we are calling components, my component. In my component, first of all, we are going to use strict. Then we are going to define a variable that is going to hold react create element function. And after that, we need to create our actual component, which is going to extend react that component. Now in it, if we want to display something on the page, we need to do that using the render function and you can return whatever you want through that function either something with creating this element, that's why we created this and we are going to use it a bit later, or you can just return text. So just to see if our component works. Next, we need two more lines of code uh, to first of all, define where we wanna display our component. And then we wanna add this line right here, which is going to say to React uh, where to display the actual component. So first of all, we define our DOM container and then we say, okay, display my component in that DOM container. And now let's check out if our component is actually displaying on the, on the page. So it says, hello from my component. Okay, so now we know our component works. Now let's try to make something a bit more complicated with it. So instead of returning just text, let's try to return a button using this react create element function. So re, uh, react create element uh, needs two, uh, three parameters to work. So first of all, you need to define element. In our case, it's going to be a button. Then you need to define all of the properties of that element, attributes, class names, uh, props that you wanna send to it and so on. And then you need to define the children of those elements. In this case, since this is a button, the children of that element is just going to be a text in that button. And if I save this, check it out in my browser. As you can see, we get hello from button. Okay, so since this is a reactive framework or library, let's try to do something reactive. So React, like any other good front-end framework, is doing all of the changes or reacting through a state. So we need to first of all define our state for our component. We first define a construct constructor that is going to accept props. Then we define super props. And then we define our state. And our state is going to consist of some properties. In our case, we are going to define a state which is going to be called clicked times because we want to, of course, make a vanilla example in which we are going to count the number of times our button has been clicked. Of course, number of click times is initially zero. 
So we need to change that state and display it somehow. Of course, what I'm showing you right now, as you will see, it's going to get trickier and trickier, and it's going to be a pain in the ass to work with. So just bear with me. So we need to say to this button, so when somebody clicks on you, add one to click times. So we are going to do that by doing on click and then this dot set state. So this is a function for setting our state. Then we take the whole state and then just change it. So click times is going to be this dot state dot click times plus one. And then we are just displaying hello from button, but we don't want to display that. We actually want to display the number of times this has been clicked. So we are going to change our children to be clicked this dot state dot click times. So this is going to give us the number of times the button has been clicked. And then we just add times uh, here. Save this. And now we have this button. If we click it, as you can see, we get clicked seven, eight and so on. Now, as I said, this can be a pain in the ass to work with because let's say that we want to display the number of click times in another element, which is going to be just a paragraph element, just a P tag. So we want to display it there. Of course, just like in view, uh, we need to wrap this in something. It can, can't just be one element below the other. Most of the frameworks do it that way. So first of all, we need to add a wrapper to this. So I'm going to return that value like this. Then we add a wrapper. Now we have to define the child of that wrapper. As you can see, it's an element of div. It has a class name, not a class, but a class name because you can't use class in React because it's a reserved keyword, just like here. So you need to do it uh, by class name. It's going to be called wrapper. And then we want to add this as its child, and then we just close it out. Save this, let's check it out in the browser. Refresh it, nothing is changed much, but if we take a look at the HTML, you can see that we have a wrapper, and in that wrapper we have a button. And now let's just add a P tag, which is also going to count the number of times we click the button. So we added another, create react element, it's p tag, it doesn't have anything for its properties or attributes, and it's just said clicked number of times. Save this, refresh it, and now we get this. Okay, so this is great. So as you can see, this is pretty shitty way to do stuff in React. And uh, it's slow, it's unreadable, it's unmaintainable, and so on. So you would use this way if you just need to do something quickly on your web website because the another option is to use something called JSX, which is going to make this code much, much, much more readable. The only thing with JSX is that you need to pre-process it or run it through Babel so that it would be compiled in, into normal JavaScript. Now, I'm going to show you a quick way, but you shouldn't be using that quick way in production. Because in the next episode in this series, we are not going to be using any of this. We are going to be using Create React App, which comes with Webpack, and it's going to handle all of that stuff for us. But for now, let's just add Babel to this setup so that we can write JSX in our component. So first of all, we would also add Babel from CDN. And next thing we need to do, we need to actually rename our component not to be my component.js, but to be J JSX, and also define a type of that component to be type text Babel. Okay, so save this, and then we go to my component and we need to rename it. And it should be my component.jsx. Okay. Now we can start writing JSX here instead of uh, this, right? And to do that, I'm first of all just going to comment all of this out because I hate it and I don't want to look at it. And now we can start writing JSX. So first of all, we need a wrapper, right? So you just create 
a normal div. The only difference is you don't write class, you just write class name because of the reasons I already talked about. Uh, class is a reserved word in JavaScript. Next thing, we need a button. Of course, you just add that button and in it, uh, we need to display the number of times something has been clicked. So clicked, then you use uh, curly braces, this, that, state, clicked times. Of course, we need to add a prop or attribute, this on click and attribute right here to our button. And you would do it the same way we did it before, uh, just this time the on click is an actual attribute of your button and then you just put all of the logic inside of here. And next thing we wanna do, we just wanna display the same text in a P tag. So we just open up a P tag, add this line here. As you can see, this is much more readable and much more maintainable than what we had before. Let's just test it out if it works. Okay, so it works just like expected. So just to drill in how React is just JavaScript, let's uh, try to do something like this. So in our render function, I'm just going to open up a conditional tag, which is going to say if this state is clicked 10 times, then return some message. And in our case, that message is going to be, you click this 10 times, no more clicking for you. So this is going to render whenever we click our button 10 times, instead of this right here, right? So let's test it out. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and nine, 10. And when you click it 10 times, you click this 10 times, no more clicking for you. Great, so React is just JavaScript. It's a little bit more complicated, but mainly uh, whatever you do in JavaScript, you can just do it in React the way you used to. And there is just one more thing I wanna show you. So because this is just JavaScript, of course we don't have to have all of this sausage code right here, or uh, we can just call a function instead of that. So I'm just going to create a function. This function is going to be called handle click and in it, we can just put this logic from our button. And then instead of all of this, we can just replace that with handle click. So as you can see, this looks much better. Let's just test it out. Works just like expected. Okay, so this was uh, just a quick taste of React. And uh, as I said at the beginning of this episode, this is not how we are going to be doing React, but I just wanted to show you this so that you can appreciate uh, how actually it's easier it's going to get. Uh, with uh, all of the JSX and some other stuff that I'm going to show you, functional components and so on. So anyway, uh, remember everything we did here will be available for you on GitHub. The link will be in the description below. And as always, thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next one.